Welcome to the Cult of Domesticity podcast, where two best friends tell each other stories about history, politics, and true crime, 725 miles apart. I'm Courtney. And I'm Ashley. And today I'm a little drunk. Um, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I had to take my grandmother's really, really friendly, nice cat to the vet today, and I think... We're going to have to put him down. He's basically the best reason about going to my grandparents' house right now. If anyone has grandparents with dementia, you can vouch for that. The animals are the best part because your grandparents may not remember you, but the cats still love you. So I'm I'm like half a glass in of wh- like Crown Royal whiskey. Drinking her feelings, basically. I'm drinking my feelings really hard. I've cried four times today. Yeah. It's going well. The conservative estimate, but yeah. <laughs> so I'm um, going to be doing most of the talking today. Sorry about it. Yes. <laughs> I'm really happy about it today. Um, but today, Ashley is going to be doing our Halloween episode talking about the Salem witch trials, and I'm really, really excited. It's one of my favorite things to read and or be horrified about, so... <laughs> And I figure since I'm closer to it geographically, I get to do it. Ha! I want to be closer to it geographically so bad. Hire (laughs) me. Hashtag hire Courtney. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So, the Salem Witch Trials took place between February of 1692 and May of 1693. And I feel like there are so many misconceptions about it. So what I want to do real quick is go through the basics of, you know, who, what, when, why, etc. And then I want to address some of the misconceptions that seem to be pervasive in pop culture. I feel like that's probably the best plan. So that's how I'm going to go about this. I would just like to say I enjoy you approaching this how I taught my students to approach an essay (laughs) or ID questions. Do the who, what, when, where, and significance, which is the why. I mean, I read enough of their awful ones to know what you look for when you're grading things. If you would like to hear some of the stupid shit my students wrote, please (laughs) let us know on Facebook and Twitter, because I still have them, motherfuckers. (laughs) Not that we would ever be anything but professional. I don't know what you're talking about. We're professional 100% of the time. (laughs) Oh, wait. Okay, back to the good stuff. So the Salem Witch Trials took place from February 1692 through May of 1693 in Salem Village, which was separate from Salem Town. Can we just say that this is 200 years after Columbus sailed the ocean blue? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes Sorry, I- that's immediately what came into my mind. I'll shut up now. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Okay, so (laughs) Salem Village and Salem Town had sort of a contentious relationship in that Salem Village had to answer to the council of Salem Town for a lot of their stuff. You mean like the sharks and the jets, but with less dancing because they're Puritans? With less dancing, less singing, yeah. Less booze. Presumably, but I mean, they drink beer like water, so maybe not. I mean, did you really want to drink the water? No, but anyway. (laughs) So most of the trials and everything took place in Salem Village and they were eventually sent to Salem Town and then to other prison, like other jails in the area. That's my nephew. He sounds adorable. I've seen pictures. He's fucking adorable. He is adorable, but he's screaming for his mother. So slightly less. Now I'm talking about you. What? He's at the gate and she's downstairs. Okay. He's trying to escape. He's good at Don't it. let the child escape. He's like the real life Tommy Pickles and that he's gotten in trouble at daycare before for letting like leading kids out of a gate that he opened. Hashtag Ashley's nephew is Tommy Pickles. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So Salem Village is now Danvers, Massachusetts. So I mean they were close, but they weren't the same thing. And I think that's one of the main Because nowadays everyone goes to Salem, which would have been Salem Town, and they expect to see, like, the graveyard and the hanging ledge, and none of that is in, well, technically the ledge or the cliff that they were hanged on is in Salem, but it's like... 
the outskirts is not in the middle of anyway. I like that we are that depressing of a society. We like to be like, let's go well, where a bunch of people were fucking killed and the thing for is, horrible reasons. Well, people want to go to a graveyard, but if they were hanged as witches, they weren't buried in consecrated ground. They weren't given Christian burial. So there isn't really one specific graveyard where everyone is, you know. Salem witch trials are widely considered an example and one of the best examples of mass hysteria. They boil down basically to a group of mostly young women accusing a large and varied but mostly older group of their neighbors of witchcraft in Puritan New England, which led to the deaths of at least 25 people, 20 of whom were executed. Meaning that like five Question. people. Hang on. One, two, three, four. Like, six people died in prison, either after they were sentenced, but before they were hanged, or while they were awaiting trial. Hung. They were hanged. Don't even get me started on this. I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, listeners. I like to just piss Ashley off because she's a grammar Nazi. I can't help it. It's my little paralegal heart. <laughs> it was before you were a paralegal, dear. Yeah. yeah. All right. So... There were four days, really, where they executed people. So the first day, it was only one person. It was Bridget Bishop. That was June 10th. Then July 19th, they executed five people. So Rebecca Nurse, Sarah Good, Elizabeth Howe, Susanna Martin, and Sarah Wilds. Then August 19th. George Burroughs, George Jacobs Sr., Martha Carrier, John Proctor, John Willard. Can we please talk about how this is getting close to my birthday? It really was. I was thinking the same thing. Um... So then in September, September 22nd, Martha Corey, who is the wife of Giles Corey, who is my favorite. We'll get into him in a minute. Not literally. Maybe literally. I don't know. I don't want to know. You're drunk enough. It might happen. <laughs> so I do love my crown royal maple. Please, please, if you want to send me some, let me know at <laughs> domesticpodcast at gmail.com. And so it begins. <laughs> Oh, if Crown Royal would sponsor us, my family would be so fucking content. All right. So September 22nd was the last day they executed anybody. And the people who were hanged that day were Martha Corey, Mary Eastie, Mary Parker, Alice Parker, and Udator. I don't think I spelled that right. Sorry. Wilmot Red, Margaret Scott, and Samuel Wardwell Sr. Now, Giles Corey, who is my favorite is a badass because he technically wasn't executed because he was never convicted. But the only reason he wasn't convicted was because he refused to confess. And they were literally torturing this man to get him to confess to something that he didn't do and he wouldn't confess and survive by a lie. He would rather die because he kept telling the truth. So I, he's my favorite. I love him. So is this normal for like witch trials at the time because i know they're popular like england france mm -hmm. europe basically they differ in several ways in europe the method of execution was much different they i believe and i might be wrong i might be making this up but they burned people at the stake for witchcraft whereas no one was burned in salem which is one of the major misconceptions about it but also in europe they didn't have as many people on trial in the space of time so they would have, like, maybe one or two a year, but they were more consistent. Okay. They would be, like, every sort of year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I was just interested because I know English trials of witchcraft are very similar to the Salem witch trials because they did hang some people, but not everyone. Right. And I just, sorry, I've been to way too many graduate conferences. A lot of people are re researching this. No, so at I mean, least it's a good thing, though, because it's one of the best ways to prevent it from happening again. Thing. No, in academia, the problem is it's an oversaturated field, and I just was curious to see, like, if the people have done cross-country oh. costs. I mean, I'm sure someone has at least attempted it. I didn't find anything, but I wasn't particularly looking, if that makes sense. That's, yeah, that's true. I mean... I miss my academic access because I love... I don't know if you noticed from our Twitter, I love JSTOR. JSTOR. As a historian, you just... You love JSTOR. It's life. Like, I love Lexus. Lexus is my favorite. Okay, witches. Anyway. Well, what, sorry, go ahead. What makes a witch? I'm just curious. Like, well, why? There were several ways that they would find out who was a witch. First of all, there was a group, a core group of people who were accusing people. 
And they would say that they saw the specter of this person and they were tormenting them and they were pinching them and poking them with pins and just tor- like torturing them, which <sighs> I'm sorry, bullshit. Anyway, um, another method was the dunk test. So they would. Did they weigh as much as a church? <laughs> she turned me into Newt. I got better. I got better. I mean, that's basically that's basically what they did. They would say this person has been tormenting me, and they they keep me up at night, and they've done all these things to me, and yada yada yada. It was a whole thing. So they're in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? Is that not true? Um, according to the Crucible, which is my favorite play. Um, yeah, never read it. What? We had to read it my junior year of high school, and then I wrote a paper on it my senior year. Anyway. You I it. went to college instead of going to high school English. Oh, that's right. All right. Well, you need to read it. It's great. Um, we read Into the Wild and Secret Life of Bees. <laughs> and I got extra credit for making brownies and bringing them into class. Oh, community college. It was a community college. <laughs> okay. I love community college. I love it so much. <laughs> I think I graduated with the honors. <laughs> okay. I wish. Anyway, so they would do the dunk test where if they floated, they were a witch, but if they drowned, they were innocent. Like they what if they knew how to swim? Body of water. Um, it was, I mean, if they knew how to swim and they saved themselves and they were a witch, I mean. I, it, Shit out those, of luck? Yeah. That's one of those where it's like, if you, it's another jazz core situation, like. Do you let yourself die knowing that you're innocent or do you take measures to save yourself and then face the consequences? What if you're like Michael Phelps level and you can just swim to the other side and everyone thinks you're dead or you can hold your breath and pretend to be dead? I mean, they would do it in a lake most of the time. So, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of ingress and egress for a lake. What? Not everyone is you, dear. Anyway, um, another... (laughs) Another method they would use um, would be testimony of, I mean, because there were people who did confess, even though they knew that they hadn't done anything, like, and then those people would then in turn name their neighbors or people they had grudges against um, as witches, and then they would face trial, even though that person, so it was basically confession in open court, or if they were accused by someone who had confessed in open court, then that was considered the same thing. And there was also, okay, so this is probably the grossest, but the victim of... Oh, tell me. Please tell me. (laughs) The victim of the witchcraft would, um, they would take their urine and make a cake with it out of, like, dirt, and then a dog would eat it. And then I think, if I remember right, if the dog... If the dog dies, then they're a witch. A witch. And their, te- their testimony and accusations were to be taken seriously. But if the dog is okay, then that person wasn't actually bewitched. And there was a- something else that going on. And then, Not the worst thing I've heard. The person who made the first witch cake, which is what it was called. But I called it in my notes, piss cake. Um, <laughs> ended up facing... I almost spit my water out! Ended up facing charges of witchcraft herself. So, Wait, really? Yeah, so... Do we know how it went? I think i could be wrong but i think she was one of the ones who was executed i'll have to look it up and we could do it as like a mini sode yeah or like an upgrade but so let's talk about the people who are doing the accusing because there were the afflicted quote unquote so elizabeth booth elizabeth hubbard mercy lewis betty paris who's like nine mind you john earl wait Anne Putnam Jr., Mary Warren, and Abigail Williams. So these were the girls who were saying they were being tortured and, like, pricked with pins and all of this other stuff. Um, sorry, I've been listening to way too much wine and crime, but (laughs) I just love when they do child murders. Like, they're like, you're gonna take the word of a child? Like, legitimately, they are the worst witnesses. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Even more so when they know. Have you- Because these were, um, Betty Paris- Mercy Lewis and Abigail Williams were all connected in some way to the preacher of the town. Fuck no. Yeah, so they had a vested interest in not being seen as liars. And Wait, are they Calvinists? They're Puritans. I don't know. Protestantism, not my strong point. It is my strong point. <laughs> Sorry. 
I'm super Protestant. <laughs> Protestantism. <laughs> okay. Um, you would have really enjoyed my facial expressions right there. I but um, Don't worry. Confused face? Yeah. No, uh, drunk, confused face. It's a different thing. You know it so well. well. The confessed witches, quote unquote, confessed, because I'm sorry, that's not a valid confession. Anyway. What? Wait, you mean being tortured isn't valid at, in a court of law? Yeah, no, not so much. Sorry to break it to you. What? So these were Damn it. Benjamin Abbott, Sarah Bibber, Deliverance Dane, and Thomas Putnam. So, I mean, this is... It's a village. It's Salem Village. It's a small town. Everyone knows each other. Everyone's family has been there for pretty much forever. And by forever, I mean... Wait, it's where I live. It's legitimately where I live. Well, I mean, by forever, I mean a generation, (gasps) like 20 years. Because if you think about it... No, no, I'm not kidding you. That's legitimately where I live. Yes, dear. (laughs) This could happen here. I'm not shitting you. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. I mean, no one wants to think that it could, but it absolutely could. Because we don't know for sure what caused all of this. And we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that. But Are we going to talk about LSD? Please tell me we're talking about the LSD theory. Sort of. It's not really... Yes! Anyway, yeah. That's one of the things we're going to talk about. But So first I want to talk about some common misconceptions. We already talked about the method of execution, which most people think burning because you think witch trials you think burning um but in fact most people were hanged even though giles Corey was pressed oh please explain pressing to our listeners okay so this is this is another reason why he's my favorite um what would happen would be he was tied down and they added stones they put stones on top of him this man was like even for our day he was kind of old he was in like his 60s and 70s they put like a flat they board over like you board, too. yeah and then like they would add rocks and then they would ask him do you confess all he would say was more weight and they would add another rock and they'd say do you confess and he would say more weight so this man's last words were more weight freaking love him <laughs> Um, and mind you, these are not, like, small rocks. Oh, no. These are no, cool. these are probably, like, well, they're, like, as much as a man can lift. So they're, like, pretty, like, at least 10-plus pound rocks yeah. on a board. It's You suffocate to death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's horrible. It is. And he was, like, I'm not going to lie to save myself because that's another Fucking love thing. it. Anyway. So we talked about the location, how most people think modern Salem is where it happened when it's not. Salem Town became modern Salem. Salem Village became Danvers in the 1750s. The hangings took place on Proctor's Ledge, which is in modern Salem. And it wasn't confirmed where the hangings took place until last year. And they found evidence that um, from firsthand accounts of like yes. like they were talking about how the sunlight hit from a certain way and there was like a copse of trees that matched and so they were finally able to to definitively say last year that yes proctor's ledge they thought that it would have been gallows hill which isn't too far away but it didn't match right so it's like a state park gallows hill park but that's not actually where it happened okay proctor's ledge Ooh, it's a nice hill for hay it is it is there's like a rock, like an outcropping, but there's like a bunch of trees. Yeah, I yeah, I could totally see you. So they said there was like it was coming from a certain angle. Yeah. Another oh, one, I could totally see it. Right. Another I mean, I could see Gallows Hill being that too, but it's not. It does it doesn't But they could happen. totally split it. They could, but they didn't, though. So. Cause fuck them. There there is um in Salem proper, so like Salem Town then, but Salem today. There is, it's called the witch house, and it's where they held them after they were convicted, but before, and they took them in, like, a cart from the witch house to Proctor's Ledge, and that's in, like, sort of downtown Salem, like, near where all the crazy New Age shops and everything are. Um... One, my cat just socks just my cat socks just scared the shit out of me because he's <laughs> sitting on the other side of a bunch of stuff, and all of a sudden I just saw something pop up. Um, but can we talk about the ghost adventures episode yes. where they did the witch's yes. house? 
Yeah. Um, I think if I remember right, that's the same house that I was just talking about. Yeah, it's the but, witch's house. And yeah. they, like, it's not. I don't know. I It could be. I think they did the witch house Lyceum, which. They definitely did. I mean, I know they did Salem. I don't remember if they, I thought they did a restaurant. I should mention to our listeners, we don't believe that Ghost Adventures is true. Oh, no. no. Um, We just like watching their reactions. Some of it is somewhat convincing, but there are so many explanations for what else it could be. Also, we miss Nick. I do miss Nick. I miss him a lot. He calmed it down so much. Yeah. Anyway, so another misconception people seem to have is the scope or number of victims. People think that a lot more were executed and not as many were accused when, in fact, like we said, um, 20 people were executed, but the total number of accused were 185. So only about 11% of the accusations made were fatal, which I think not that bad. people think that they were more lethal. I mean, it's not great, but it could have been a lot worse. Oh, definitely a lot worse. If I told you that all of the victims were human, what would you say? I don't believe you. You're correct. That's not true. There were two dogs that were actually executed as witches familiars, and one of them was the first. I think the first one was the one who ate, ended up eating the piss cake. <laughs> Poor dog. I could be making that up. You no, know I love dogs. I know. I could be making that up. I might be lying. I don't know. That might have been in the crucible. Anyway, another another popular misconception is that if you confess, you are put to death when not always. In fact, if a person confessed and repented in open court, they were often pardoned and then they were asked to say who they colluded with. So like freaking Cotton Mather. All right. So this guy. He was one of the one of the judges, as well as Nathaniel Hawthorne's grandfather. Fun fact: he, what, he I love him. Um, but they were heavily under the impression that witches never work alone. There's always a group. There's always a coven, and if there's one, there's a lot more. So they would always, if someone confessed in court, they would always press them as to who else they were practicing magic with and who else they were in league with Satan with and all this stuff. So that was how so many other people were, were accused by people who'd been, who had confessed to save themselves basically. And so that was where a lot of the score settling and like the grudges that were played out. That was where a lot of that came in. But then there were also the, Oh, I love the grudges. Oh yeah. There were the unrepentant or those who just wouldn't confess. Giles Corey. And they were a lot more likely to die. So if they confessed and they were like, but I'm not sorry, they were like, cool, we'll meet you at Proctor's Ledge. <laughs> but if you confessed and you were, you said, look, I screwed up and I want to make it right, they were a lot more likely to let you keep breathing. I like breathing, so I would go with That's that. Good. Yeah, somewhat completely necessary. So let's get into some theories. Yes, please. The most obvious is that it was a group of bored girls who didn't like that they had no social currency or power over their own lives. So they decided, all right, cool, fuck everyone. Let's let's stir some shit up. Um, to me, that seems the most plausible. I don't know. I think that was probably how it started, but I don't think they ever envisioned what it became. And at a certain point, you can't go back. So once Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So once they had started it, they couldn't just be like, Oh yeah, no, sorry, we're lying because then they would face corporal punishment and quite possibly like torture themselves. So I don't know. I don't know. That's not great, but that seems I think I think it's definitely how it started. Yeah, because I mean it snowballed for sure. I mean, who doesn't want to have attention? Right. And if you're a teenage girl in Puritan New England, how else are you going to get it? If not by, I don't know. The thing I love about New England is that we have always, always been a very litigious people. Like, the people here go to court over the stupidest, littlest shit you could ever imagine. And it's been that way since the get-go. Compared to, what, the Midwest where we are just like, okay, thanks, Bye. And then you I bitch mean, about it for two weeks. Right. Compared to the Midwest where it's like, 
the going to court is seen as the last resort because most people can't afford to do so. I mean, and you not, don't want all not your... That, not that a lot of people in New England can afford to do so, but it's not so much the, the last resort. It's like, okay, well, instead of letting shit get out of hand, let's let someone else decide it. It's not... I don't know. I think in New, in New England... I don't know how to describe it. It's just... People aren't as nervous or afraid of going to court as it seems like people in the Midwest and other parts of the country might be, if that makes sense. Maybe because it's, it's part of the inherent. They've done it so much. <laughs> well, think about it. It's like more of their heritage. Like in the Midwest, you don't want to bother anyone, be like, oh, that's such an inconvenience to go to court. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think there's an element of. We can settle this ourselves. There's no need to put our business out in front of everyone on public record. I mean, there's no need to involve third, fourth, and fifth parties just to figure this out when it's something that, for the most part, we can handle on our own. And if not, well, (laughs) see you at the criminal trial because I'm doing it anyway. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. No, I don't know either. So, okay. As far as theories go... There's the mass hysteria theory, which once it was started, these people who were so strictly, rigidly religious were convinced that they were being persecuted by the devil. And the only way that they could stop that persecution was to root out every single person who had ever colluded with him. And I mean, that's how I like to function is just to get rid of everyone who's ever talked to the person I hate. (laughs) Right. Anyway. But no, so it was that thing of, like, tear it out by the root and be done with it. And there was no other way to do that but to do this in their in their mindset. That one, I think, played into it, I think, is somewhat of a combination of that and the first one. I, I don't know. Then there's the hallucinogen theory, which is yes. one of your favorites. <laughs> Which is that there was... I don't know why you think it's my favorite. Maybe because you just screamed like Justin Trudeau trying to figure out how to say yes. Eh? Eh. Um, hallucinogen theory comes from a suggestion that there may have been some sort of bacteria growing on the rye, I think it was, or some whatever grain it was that they used most frequently. It was rye. The rye. I, I know yeah. this. But basically that caused the core group of accusers to be hallucinating these things that they accused other people of doing. And I think that would explain it, but it's sort of flimsy in that if you're dealing with someone who's hallucinating, you know... Yes, dear. So I think the hallucinate theory is kind of like the children wanted attention theory, you know? Where it was originally that, where maybe... Because, you know, kids need smaller doses, dosages of things. Oh, so maybe it was not enough for a parent but enough, to notice shit going right, on. Right, but enough for a kid. I guess I could see that. And then, yeah, I think that's definitely, like, it could kickstart it. I don't know. At a certain point, though, when you're dealing with someone who's clearly not well or clearly hallucinating, you you humor them, but you don't hold months-long court proceedings that end up killing 20 people just to go along with what they're saying. You know what I mean? At a certain point, you have to know what they're saying isn't what's actually happening. But, okay, so say the bread is, like, they do get the infected bread and they start tripping. Mm -hmm. But what if they got a new batch of wheat in that wasn't infected? Think about it that way, like, where they were just tripping enough that they had a really bad trip and then it's and then to where they couldn't go back maybe yeah like all of a sudden they're just like shit we're in this too deep we can't keep going i mean i guess i could see that too i mean that's the thing with a lot of these theories is that they're just plausible enough that i could buy it but i don't entirely buy it i think it's some combination of factors that we at this point probably won't ever have solid proof of if that makes sense. We need a TARDIS. We, we need do. to go back in time. We really do. Except if we TARDIS back to those times, we're 100% being added to the list of 20 people who were hanged for witchcraft. You know what? I think they do hanging better at that point because 
They know, like, we'll have the proper height so our neck will break right away. Don't press me. Don't draw and quarter me. Oh, God, drawing and quartering. I don't even want to have It's horrible. Tar and feather. No, thank you. Oh, tar and feather is probably... Because you don't die from tar and feather. No, that's, that's what they don't right. tell you in the books normally, like, for class. You're alive and conscious for most of it. Oh, no, you can survive it. That was... They did that on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and I thought it was really funny because their depiction of being tarred and feathered was way more accurate than most TV shows because they survived it and they were like stumbling around (laughs) after Dennis and Matt got tarred and feathered. One of the things that always surprises me is that people associate Salem Witch Trials with Halloween, even though it mostly, I mean, the bulk of it took place in the summer because that last execution, that last round of executions was September. I don't know. So really, it's just around my birthday Great. Another horrible thing my sister can blame me for. Yes. Clearly you were responsible for that thing that happened like 300 and, well, for you, 300 years. She blamed me for Hurricane Katrina. So (laughs) what more do I want, (laughs) listeners? Just so you know how my family goes, my 13th birthday was the landfall of Hurricane Katrina. (laughs) What did my siblings wish me the next year? Happy anniversary of Katrina. My sister then blamed me for Harvey this year. It's not my fault. I mean, my birthday is... Kate blames you for Katrina. Of all people. Oh, no, Andrew, no, Andrew know, does too. Like, she's just such a rational person most of the time. <laughs> not that Andrew's not. I don't know him that well, but... Only one person from college has met him. He's a ghost, let's not lie. <laughs> he should... um, so basically, <laughs> Salem Witch Trials... The long and far-reaching effects of it can be seen even as recently, I mean, obviously today there are parallels, but that can and probably will be said for every age. The most striking parallels were during McCarthyism, which is what inspired Arthur Miller to write The Crucible to begin with, when they were doing the Red Scare and trying to seek out communists, all that fun stuff. Burn the witch, burn the commie! Yeah, that's the same thing. Um, Yeah. So I think that's the mass hysteria is the easiest to sort of get behind when you're using the witch trials and witch hunts in general as a parallel for any sort of political situation that you aren't particularly in favor of. I don't know where I was going with that. I don't really have a conclusion for this because it's just that I did so much research and then like I have nothing written down to wrap it up. So sorry about that. When you think about Halloween you think of witches and then you have to remember what people went through who were accused of witches so you have to take everything you look at beyond face value don't always follow the crowd because Salem is an excellent example of how following the crowd can lead you to paying your neighbors you could I mean you could point at a certain section of society We need to all just become more understanding of each other. Just try to think of the other side before you go accusing people of being a witch and determining if they weigh as much as churches. Arguably, understanding the other side wouldn't have helped Salem Witch Trials because understanding an innocent person doesn't mean that you're going to find them innocent if you have no other motive to do so, if that makes sense. Like, just because you know that they didn't do what you're saying they did when you have a vested interest in proving that they did do what you say they did, just because you know that's not true isn't going to stop you from moving forward with whatever horrendous shit you're trying to pull. But I'm thinking for 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 the the people... Yeah, absolutely. Empathy. Understanding. Don't go around saying she turned you into a newt, but you got better. Because we don't play that anymore. It's not an acceptable attention-seeking method. But just remember... Questioning your leaders is still an acceptable form of being patriotic or being... It doesn't mean that you don't have to follow them if you're questioning their motive. I think really the moral of the story is be like Giles Corey. Don't capitulate to something you know is false just to save your own skin. If you know the truth, defend the truth and speak up about it and more weight. I think that's what I'm going to end on. More weight. (laughs) 
<laughs> Thank you for listening to the Cult of Domesticity. We're available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and as of today, Google Play and Chorus. Side note, I've been using Chorus all day today, and it's kind of my new favorite thing. I even uninstalled Apple Podcasts because it's so much better. It's sort of like a social media meets podcasting meets recommendation. For Making friends. Yeah, meets recommendations for something that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise been recommended to try, but then you end up loving. If you look for it in the app store, you have to type in chorus podcast because if you type in just chorus, you're going to have a bunch of karaoke apps, but yeah. And that's not an ad. Well, we not. just both installed chorus today. <laughs> um if we are not on your preferred app, let us know so we can fix that. Um, remember to still rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. It's the best way to spread the word out there. Most people get their podcast via iTunes. Um, if you do have a recommendation for another podcasting platform, you can email us now because we have our own separate email address for the podcast. Um Courtney, since you set it up, do you want to tell them what it is? Because I don't remember off the top of my head which one we went with. Domestic Podcast. So the same as our Facebook and Twitter at gmail.com. Yay! And remember, check us out on Facebook and Twitter where you can get your uh, recipe of the week, Mm -hmm. which I believe this week is mine. So should I give them a hint on what it is? Yes, do it. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. So this week, I'm doing the Barefoot Contessa, and it involves apples. So perfect for your fall love or for Thanksgiving as it's coming up to make for your family or for work. So check it out on Sunday. We're going to have that out. As well as we have additional posting and information on the week's topic. So, Ashley, you thinking long distance 5-5? Five, five? I think we can. Ready? 5-5. Five, 5-5. Five. Five, five. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>